In this video, we're going to talk about how conversion optimization works in the Facebook algorithm. And so Facebook uses something called machine learning to actually take a look at the constraints that you set at your ad set level and actually actively optimize your ad sets and your ads on your behalf so that you're spending your money as profitable as possible. And so why is it so important in this video to understand at a 10,000 foot level how machine learning works? Why are we dedicating an entire video to this topic? And the reason is because machine learning is what the Facebook algorithm uses to optimize on your behalf. And so understanding um, a very unscientific and, and 10,000 foot level of, of how machine learning works and how it optimizes will really help to sort of open your eyes to what's going on behind the scenes in your Facebook ads, as well as will help you to troubleshoot problems and determine whether or not results you're seeing are actually a problem or are actually a result of the machine learning algorithm just optimizing on your behalf. And so I guess to preface this video, my very unscientific definition of what machine learning actually is, is that it is essentially the ability for a computer to use trial and error to continually optimize towards reaching a specific objective. And so I guess the best way to sort of explain to you how machine learning works is to actually watch a YouTube video about um, how this robot teaches itself how to walk using machine learning. And so this is just going to be a quick uh, couple minute video. Hopefully you can hear it. Um, oh. This is an ad for a project. Well, there's an advertisement. This is what it looks like and this is what it feels like. Student, uh, before he came to my lab, so you can see the thread running uh, through and here's the robot doing it. Great. So essentially what's happening here is the robot, they said, hey robot, I want you to get from point A to point B and they gave the robot that objective. And now essentially what's happening is the robot has to figure out how to get there. So the robot is starting out by pretty much um, just randomly flailing its limbs around, trying to understand how its limbs work and understand how the movements it makes actually moves its body. And so it's just going to randomly sort of flail, along, flail around and just try and figure out what actions produce desired results. And so um, as we fast forward a little bit, um, then the robot is going to sort of create a model around, hey, how can I actually move? And you can see this is really awkward. This is not necessarily an optimal way for the robot to walk, but it figured out a way to move itself towards the objective. And uh, so it just flails around and it gets there. It's not ne necessarily optimal, but if the robot continues enough and, and if the, the constraints were placed in the robot that were like, hey, minimize the amount of motion you need to take to move, then the robot would just continue flailing until it stumbled upon a better, more optimal way to walk. And then it would go ahead and walk. And so um, uh, essentially this process, sort of the flailing around, to see what works and what doesn't. And then he kind of figures out a few movements that maybe are awkward, but that they technically work. And then just doubling down and optimizing for those movements. It's the exact same way that Facebook optimizes for your ads. And so essentially the conversion objective that you set is you telling Facebook, okay, Facebook, you're starting at point A, I want you to get to point B. And so the conversion objective that you set tells Facebook what your single objective is. And Facebook will then sort of start flailing around for the first one to three days. Um, but ultimately, Facebook will focus 100% of its optimization efforts to accomplish that single goal at the exclusion of all else. That's why typically you don't want to set your conversion objective to get clicks because essentially what that's telling Facebook is, Hey, Hey, Facebook, like if there were some mythical disease that caused a, a certain number of the population to just click on every single link on the Facebook newsfeed, you'd be telling Facebook that you want to optimize for those people essentially, which is obviously it's not going to convert for you. And so that is why you want to pick a conversion objective that you actually care about um, because Facebook will optimize 100% towards that objective. And so what Facebook will do is you set your conversion objective and then Facebook will take a look at your budget and will attempt to spend the budget that you've set as efficiently as possible, starting with who Facebook believes to be the number one most likely prospect 
to perform that conversion event and then moving down the list. And so essentially Facebook is trying on your behalf to spend your money as efficiently as possible. And the targeting, your placement settings, all of that all serve as constraints on the Facebook targeting algorithm. And so I'm going to draw an illustration of this out for you briefly, but everything that you set serves as a constraint on the Facebook targeting algorithm and Facebook will work within those constraints to spend your budget as efficiently as possible. Now, Facebook obviously can't see your ad like, you know, like a human does. You can't straight up tell people, hey, Facebook, I'm trying to sell sneakers to these people, uh, to, to certain demographics of people. Facebook can't know exactly what it is you're selling. So to get an idea of who is most likely to respond positively to your ad and perform your conversion objective, Facebook will just start randomly showing your ad to people within your targeting constraints. Just like the robot was randomly flailing around at the beginning, Facebook will sort of start randomly throwing and flailing your ad around at the beginning to get an idea of who is actually uh, most positively responding to these ads. And so Facebook will take a look at a number of things. The exact list is, is not known, but it'll take a look at your past account history, other campaign and ad set performance in your account to help influence its decision on who to target first which is part of the reason why brand new, sometimes called cold ad accounts or pixels, can often be the hardest to get profitable. Um, and then once an account has been running ads for a while, it's much easier to scale that and introduce new campaigns simply because Facebook already has a decent idea of the type of people who interact the most positively with your ads. And so what does this actually look like? The best way that, that I can describe this process is, let's say you're advertising um, let's say you're advertising sneakers in the United States of America. So this circle right here is the Un United States of America. That's the entire population of the United States of America. Now you tell Facebook, okay, Facebook, I want to optimize for add to carts. And, uh, and so this is your conversion event. And then you put in some demographic data. Uh, let's say we're, we only want to target people who are between the ages of 20 to 30. So people who are between the ages of 20 to 30, let's say those people make up this much of the audience. Now that's probably almost certainly not statistically accurate, but for the purposes of illustration, that's what it is. So Facebook is going to ignore all of these other people and is only going to look in this segment of the audience. Now, you also told Facebook that you want to optimize for an ad to cart, which means Facebook is going to take a look at this cohort of the audience and is going to compare past data, look at similar competitors who have, who have run similar conversion events and predict that within this audience, this segment of people is going to be most likely to perform your ad to cart conversion events, for example. Now, what Facebook's going to do then is Facebook's going to say, okay, we're going to target this group of people right here. Now I'm going to start randomly showing your ad to this person, this person, this person, this person, this person, and this person. And I'm going to do that a few hundred more times. And let's say this person completely ignores, uh, this person completely ignores the ad, this person completely ignores the ad, but this person and this person all responded favorably to the ad. What Facebook is gonna do then is Facebook is gonna basically pull out the people who responded favorably and who actually performed your add to cart objective and then look for similarities. And it's gonna say, okay, well, these people have these, these similarities in common, this demographical data in common, uh, this, you know, this like patterns and interests in common. I'm gonna go out and find more people within this who are similar to these people. And so then all of a sudden, Facebook is going to start targeting five more people. And of those five people, let's say four of them actually respond to the ads. And that allows Facebook to build more data, which then allows it to, to optimize better and target people who are more likely to convert. And so the cycle just becomes this positive feedback loop. And essentially that is how Facebook optimizes on your half. It randomly sort of flails around, figures out what works and what doesn't, and then um, starts optimizing for those people. Now let's say, 
and we'll just go to, down to a new drawing just so it's a little less confusing. Let's say this is the audience that Facebook's targeting and it, it throws out a bunch of ads, but let's say this audience is really small. Let's say this audience is like 5,000 people and you, you have a, a very small budget and there's just a very small audience. You, you've constrained Facebook a lot with your demographics. And let's say that uh, Facebook sort of sprays out a handful of ads to this very tiny audience and no one responds. In that case, if no one is interacting with the ads, Facebook doesn't know what to do. And so it's just gonna stop delivering your ads, right? Which is part of the reason why you wanna be so careful that you don't over constrain Facebook up with your demographics and targeting. It's why you want to shoot for an audience size between one to three million because that gives Facebook enough people and enough space to work from to actually uh, deliver your ads to a, to a sizable cohort of people and actually start getting data so that it can optimize on your behalf. Now, typically this optimization process that we walked through up here, typically it takes three full business days. So you'll launch an ad on day one, performance is gonna suck, performance is gonna be like down there, and then on day two it's gonna get a little better, and then on day three it's gonna get a little better, and then typically it'll increase like that. And so anytime you launch a new ad, or even if you make a, a new change to an ad set, there's typically sort of a three day optimization period where uh, your results could look like this, but typically after day three, they're gonna start to improve, um, or it's just a, a losing ad set all together. Now zooming back into our initial uh, example, you might say, well, Jordan, that's all that's all fantastic, but what about all of the people, whoops, that's an eraser. What about all of the people out here who Facebook is not targeting it at all? Like you're completely missing out on those people and you're absolutely right. And so the best way to actually, or not the best way, but one way to actually scale your campaigns and, and target additional people is to actually change your conversion events or test changing your demographic data, which will then allow Facebook to, to re-optimize and choose a different cohort of people to then start running your ads to. And it allows you to just target a, a broader um, market of people. We're gonna get into that in, in a later video in this module, um, but that's, that's, that is one way to actually go about targeting different people. And so at a very high level, this is how the Facebook machine learning algorithm works. And again, the best way to, to remember this and to just sort of visualize this in your head is to remember back to the robot teaching itself how to walk. And so this, this concept of machine learning in the Facebook algorithm is the reason why performance results can vary so wildly across ad sets and campaigns. And even if those ad sets have been identically duplicated, it's why performance can vary. Because there is an element of randomness to the initial audience that the algorithm targets, sometimes it strikes a jackpot cohort of people that just respond very favorably to the ad, and, and so it's able to create um, similar audiences and target people who are very, very likely to respond positive, positively to the ad. And sometimes the initial cohort of people that it just randomly tries out um, just don't respond to the ad at all and it strikes a dud. And as a result, the campaign does not uh, perform as well. And so no matter what happens, there's always sort of a an element of randomness to any new campaign or any new ad set, which is why many times if you if you launch an ad set and it's a dud, and you actually duplicate the ad set, uh, oftentimes you can get very different results. It, it all comes down to that initial uh, handful of people that it just randomly sends the ads to. It depends on how they respond, which affects the initial learning and optimization, which affects future responses, and it just becomes sort of a, a vicious cycle, and this vicious cycle can be either positive or negative. And so, like I mentioned um, previously, typically it takes a full three days for Facebook to actually optimize on your behalf, which means that anytime you're launching a new campaign or a new optimization from scratch, you wanna wait, wait at least 48 to 72 hours before making any determinations 
on that campaign. And it also means that if you change any feature of an ad set or an ad or launch any sort of split test, you'll likely see your cost per clicks or your cost per leads or your cost per conversion events jump up considerably um, immediately after the change is made and then trend back down to, to a more positive status over the next three days. And again, this is just the machine learning recalibrating to the changes that you've made. And so it's, it's really this element of semi-randomness in the Facebook ad results that have caused me to adopt this rule. It's sort of my number one rule of Facebook advertising and that is this, if it's profitable, don't try to fix it, right? So in other words, if a campaign is profitable and within KPI and making you money, do not try to tinker with it or otherwise make it better. You should scale it or just leave it alone because trying to tinker with it can cause that optimization to reset, which can result in dramatically different performance after the change is made. So you could take a winner and turn it into a loser, which can often result in having to kill the ad set completely. And that's just a very frustrating experience. And so the best way to test new optimizations is to do so in a completely different ad set. Now we're gonna dive in much greater detail on how to actually set up split tests in a later video. The short answer is there's no perfect way to do it, but essentially, as long as you follow rule number one, if it's profitable, don't fix it, you're gonna be okay with your campaigns. And additionally, it's incredibly important as a marketer to make data-driven decisions, especially just due to the fact that the Facebook results can be so semi-random. And so it's really important that, that you're not, as a marketer, romantic or in any way emotional about the results. Look at the data and make decisions based off, uh, based on the data. Whether an audience or an ad should work better than another audience or an ad is completely irrelevant. I'm genuinely uh, wrong about what type of ad or audience performs best. I'm probably wrong more than 50% of the time. So I've just completely stopped trying to guess at what will and what won't work. I just test it and if, it, if it's a winner, then I scale it and if it's a loser, I kill it and I just don't even care about anything else because historically, anytime I've like put a lot of effort into an ad or looked at an ad and thought, yeah, this should work really, really well, it rarely, if ever, works out as well as I think it will. And so I've just stopped trying to guess. I've stopped sort of investing myself in the ads that I launch or the, the audiences that I test and I just test it um, and I just kill the ones that, uh, that lose and, and scale the ones that win. It's a lot easier, it's a lot less stressful. And so anytime you have a question where you're like sort of optimizing your campaigns, and you're like, hmm, I wonder if I should try this or should I try this or I wonder if this will work, just stop playing those guessing games because the only way to know is to try it. And so the correct answer is just to test everything. If you have an idea, try it and see what happens. You can probably test that idea for $50 or less. And if it's a loser, okay, you kill it and you're out 50 bucks, not a big deal. And if it's a winner, then you can probably scale that to hundreds of dollars a day, which results in you know multiple hundreds of dollars per day in profitable revenue. And so it's just a no brain decision. If you have an idea, test it and see what happens. And as long as you're tracking your KPIs on a daily basis, which we're gonna get into in, in the next video, as long as you're tracking those KPIs, your key performance indicators on a daily basis and following our conversion optimization process, which we're gonna outline in this module, you'll definitely limit your losses and create massive upside potential, which will allow you to take virtually any campaign, just following this system, will allow you to take any campaign, no matter how poorly it's performing or how great it's performing, and get it to perform significantly better. So at a high level, these are all of the elements that, that sort of encompass our conversion optimization process. In the next videos, we're actually gonna drill down and show how to execute on this conversion optimization process on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week basis.